health, success, and blessings. And now, uh, really surprised that there are small number of students who attend the course. I um, don't know why. Uh, do you have any? Do you have any idea why there there is a small number of students who are attending the courses? Can you hear me? Okay, so, you, well, if things are sleeping, well, uh, uh, so I always say, well, I uh, hope that they, uh, But anyway, we continue what we've done. Uh, if you remember last time, we have a homework. Uh, I would be pleased if you write your, your uh, I don't know whether you can, uh, I don't know whether if you have written it on a piece of paper. If you have written it on Word, you can just copy and paste on on uh, on the chat window if it's possible. If not, uh, um, can listen to you. While I'm saying that, because uh, when you when you write, uh, then we can uh, uh, check uh, problems. Uh, uh, it has to do with uh, uh, it's spelling problems, uh, grammatical problems. Uh, clearly, better when it is written, but when it is uh, orally said, uh, <clears throat> sometimes you find it difficult to to check those things. Okay, now if if it's impossible for you to 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 copy and paste, uh, would like to to listen to someone. Would like to. Yes, but uh, what you have written, Jalal, here is uh, more of uh, sharing your uh, than than uh, than an essay. Okay, it's not it's not uh, you are giving your opinion. Yes, but um, uh, you are supposed to write an essay. Who would like to, uh, is there anyone who has written his essay would like to read for us, to tell us about his experience? Remember, it's a narrative and we need to have different paragraphs. Respecting the three main elements that you need to have in your in your essay, which is before the event the event here it's it's of course e-learning but it's good if you can say how things were before and how they are now and of course consequences of all that on you on your studies whatever
Yes. Is there anyone who has something to to say? But I need an essay, not a uh, few lines, not a paragraph. I need an essay. Uh, but Khadija, you, I, I, I gave you a homework first. You have to do the homework first, and then uh, you are telling me here it's like the case of the one who is not uh, doing his uh, prayers and uh, praying nawafil. First, you have to do the the homework, and then, of course. Uh, writing other on other subjects. This is something very good, very important. <clears throat> uh, that's silence, something that I don't like. Uh, um, Keep on repeating to my students that if you want to prepare for the exam for writing, there is no other way except writing. So if you don't write, that means you will not progress in writing. There is no other way. So, since uh, there's no feedback, uh, I'm really disappointed. But anyway, we have to go on and uh, assume your responsibility. Uh, if you cannot, uh, yes, of course. If you have it ready, Ahmed, why not? I'm waiting for that. But we don't have time for you to write. Uh, if it is already written on Word, on a Word document, you can share it with us. All right, waiting for you. It's good when we have a piece of writing so that you can discuss together whether it follows uh, the things we've discussed or we have something concrete.
sir. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I would like just to share it, but I don't know how. So could you please just help me? Uh, I have it here uh, in my laptop as a document, as a Word document, but I don't know how to share it. I'm so uh, sorry. Just copy. I think if you can just select copy it from your Word document and paste it on the chat window. Okay, okay. I'll try that. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have a part here. Uh, okay, here it is, sir. But uh, the conclusion is not yet. So, yes. Okay. Did you write it? Uh, not yet. The conclusion, just the conclusion. But here, what you what you have sent here up to online is what? Is it a paragraph? It's what? No, it's an essay, introduction, uh, first paragraph, second paragraph. So there are. Uh, where is the first? Uh, where does the second paragraph uh, starts? So mm, the first paragraph is there is first, second. So the first paragraph starts from. Uh, okay. Let me see. So I have had a great experience. That's the first paragraph. Okay. And then, and then, because uh, what you have said is up to everything online. That's what we have. Can you you see what what I what I am copying here? Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to copy the second the the next parts and send okay. it. Okay, I. Because this is what we we received up to online. I think I I don't know why it's not giving me to to write everything, but no, I copy. Do not send big texts, okay? Now start okay. from online and then copy again. Don't okay. send nothing at once. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Send it by parts. Thank you, sir. Yes, you can send part by part. Here, is, sure the here, is, here is the rest, sir. Now, conservation. Now, here, uh, we don't know where it starts, where is the paragraph, because... Um, so... Start from... Uh, okay. You have online, uh, do everything online. Is it what what's at after? Is it what we have here? Yes or no? Uh, let me just see. No, 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 sir. Something missing. You, Some, you, you copy. Missing. You copy from. Do everything online, and you go on, so okay. that we know what, what to, where we have to cut, what I, what I have to add. Okay. 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 And don't copy big parts, so that uh, can be sent in the chat window because you cannot send a long okay. text so what you are reading actually sir that's the second paragraph that's the body the first paragraph in the body so here is the rest of that and then i will share the other paragraph so here is the so, rest so i learned how to make proactive visual and where shall i put it 
Is it after uh, everything online? Yes, immediately after. Okay. <clears throat> Then here is the the other paragraph, the following paragraph. Okay. Well, we could have done it better by sending by mail, but anyway. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry no to problem. no problem. I'm so sorry, sir. Second, now here this second, where shall I write it? After. Uh, after I'm talking to, uh, so I'm talking to. That's the end of the first paragraph. Okay, so here. Second, that's the second paragraph. Uh-huh. This uh, way. The end of the second paragraph is some influencers. Yes, that's it. And now so here, here we have a paragraph that starts with con con conversations. So here is the third paragraph. Third, okay. Uh, right before con conversations. Uh, sorry, sir. So I have second here and I have third up to trainer. Then after trainer, what do you have? Uh, I, it should be the conclusion. That's the part I haven't finished yet. And what about these conversations here? Uh, I can't see where I'm highlighting it here. So um, can I can I read everything yes. here? You read and we follow with you. Yes, you read. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, sir. Yes. Okay. E-learning has always been beneficial to people, especially those who would like to learn something. The last two years. It has become an obligation rather than an option. I would like here to talk about my own experience with the e-learning and how it ha how has it how has it helped me. That's the introduction. Mm -hmm. I yes, have had, I have had a great experience these two years with e-learning. I have learned so many new things. First. I have never depended too much on the internet. During the lockdown, same time last year, I was obliged to do everything online. I learned how to make proactive visual and auditory presentations using PowerPoint. This has made me, has made me confident and proud of myself. I started making a lot of online conversations where I can talk and at the same time, show the screen to those I'm talking to. Second, in terms, uh, that that was uh, the end of the first, uh, second paragraph. Now I'm going to the third paragraph. Second, in terms of learning, I have acquired a lot of new things. Due to the lockdown in most parts of the world, everybody started using e-learning, for example, coaches of all kind, tutors and influencers. So the access to knowledge was easy. I read, I read three valuable books that I discovered from some influencers. That's the end of the third paragraph. Now the fourth paragraph. Third, I practiced sport on a daily basis following some e-learning applications. Most sport trainers were obliged to give courses online, so I seized the opportunity to be in shape. All I had to do was to plug my phone to TV and start working out. There were times when I forgot I'm, I'm at home. I felt as if I was with a private trainer. That's it, sir. Okay. Now, uh, now discussion with your friends. 
uh, first we see uh, uh, if you have any remark about the introduction. Have a look at the introduction of your friend and tell me if you have any remark. I'm sorry, uh, I lost the, the sharing. Uh, uh, good to inform me. I was not sharing the... Please, uh, sometimes we lose the presentation uh, to inform me in case you don't see it. Thank you, Khadija, for informing. Now, uh, read the introduction of your friend and tell me, can you see it now? Okay, now read the first paragraph of your friend, which is an introduction, and tell me if you have any remark. Something, but pay attention. If you, if you, you have to, to, to suggest how to make it better in case you have something, you, you think that there is something negative. Or uh, whether there is any problem, be it grammatical, spelling, uh, whatever. <clears throat> you write your comments. So in the last, yes, in uh, says in the last two years, yes, we yes, I think we we need an in there or during the last two years, yes, that's. Question mark in the beginning, what do you mean? Indentation, we have indentation, there is a space left. Yes, E hyphen between E and we don't put E uh, or even attached. Can be an, a, a hyphen or attached. Khadija is, is mentioning something very interesting, uh, something that we said we should not say. I would like here to talk about, this is something that should not be written. This is a personal, this is a good example of a personal statement. You don't have to say it. Just talk. You don't need to address the, uh, the teacher or the reader, okay? So directly, it has become an obligation rather than an option. E-learning uh, has, instead of putting it in the form of a question, you can say e-learning has helped me a lot. And then uh, without saying, I will talk to you. This is a personal statement as Khadija mentioned. That's good, something here that uh, Jalal is suggesting. It's good if you share with friends uh, your uh, by mail, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, no need for the question, so... Uh, 
maybe you can say it in the form of a of a declarative sentence saying uh, e-learning and how it has helped me e-learning simply can start with e-learning has helped me a lot and then whatever you write after should be a kind of explaining yes so the question so here we can erase this or maybe you can just keep it so that you in case you would like to go back to it e-learning has helped me a lot or uh, when we say experience uh, at man uh, here it's it depends on you it, for some students, it was a positive experience. Of some, for others, it was negative. But it's good it could be if you can include both negative and positive things about your experience, uh, as you like. What matters is that you share your experience with us. That's all. Okay. Now. Though the sent we, we move to the next paragraph. I've had a great experience these two years with e-learning. So again, here it is. Okay, have a look at the next. Uh, Though what I my remark is that your paragraphs are uh, too short to be considered as paragraphs. Uh, you need uh, to include more supporting, uh, more details uh, to have at least uh, because I see that you have many paragraphs, but in the exam you may be required to write five paragraph essay, <clears throat> five paragraphs including the introduction and conclusion. So that's why your paragraph should be longer. Okay, at least uh, six lines, seven lines uh, uh, in each paragraph, instead of having small paragraphs. So we can have many ideas, but uh, needs development. Now, uh, is there any remark about this paragraph? Is there any spelling problem or uh, grammatical problem, whatever? During the lockdown, yes. Yes, lockdown is one word. If it is two words, it becomes a verb. To lock someone uh, down, it's a verb if it is... Uh, uh, yes, present perfect. The use of present perfect Atman uh, is asking, is it okay if we use present perfect? Yes or not? 
definitely uh, if you know present perfect is perfect in this situation because you remember that present perfect connects the past with the present okay so here he's talking about an experience that that took uh, two years which is a period of time and the perfect tense to use is is present perfect so if you put the timeline past present future this is the timeline Normally, the present perfect is something uh, that covers this period here. Okay, so he is talking about about situation that started in the past. I will remember that it's for two years that now that we are under the lockdown, nearly at the lockdown, up to now the present. So present perfect is a good tense. Is a good tense to talk about to use here. Yes, you're right. You are mentioning here first. And then look at uh, second, where is it? Normally, we would expect it to find it here, as Umayma uh, mentioned. Yes, before, maybe you want to say maybe before. Uh, before, I had never, I've never depended too much on the net. Maybe before. Before would be better. <sighs> yes, so maybe here since we, uh, they are too short maybe you can sir, put it into sir. one paragraph yes so uh-huh um, i would like just uh, to do what you have done just right now that uh, i i learned is still in the same paragraph so it is following to do everything online it's mm -hmm. one paragraph yes uh, that would be better and that's what was uh, suggested by yasin which is uh, good. yes, it's okay. Now, if it is this way, it, it sounds uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, then if we omit first, then second will not work. Then we can say next, maybe uh, uh, if we delete first, then we have to put next. All right, too much on the net during the lockdown, same time last year. And how to make practice between the different things in PowerPoint. PowerPoint, this is uh, one word, PowerPoint. This capital letter. <clears throat> I never leave a space before punctuation mark. And I is always capital letter. Some students still write it small. I mean, I suppose here maybe you you forgot, but I, I, I find some students who still write I small letter. I is always capital letter.
Okay, now we will not go into details so that we don't waste a lot of time, but I would like your global, uh, the students would like you your global reaction about uh, the whole thing. Uh, remember that you are required to write a narrative essay. Is it a narrative essay, this one? Khadija just says it's not a story. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to. Uh... Okay, so students seems to 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 agree that it's a narrative. Uh, uh, though, in to make it clear, uh, narrative, uh, you may uh, talk about activities you were doing, uh, and not giving us the impression that sometimes it looks like an opinion essay or like an argumentative essay where they are giving arguments. So it's like a mixture between uh, an argumentative and a narrative essay, but globally speaking, it is a good, uh, I would say it's a good essay. I will not, we don't have time to go into details, but it just, to remind you that proofreading is always important. Avoid, especially the, the, the remark given by your friend uh, Khadija concerning personal statements that you started with at the very beginning. I will tell you that this you don't have to say in, in, in writing your essay. This try to, uh, to, to avoid. Okay, apart from that, few spelling problems. I think your essay is a good essay. All right, so uh, maybe you can uh, share with friends. Now here, one of your friends has said, I would like you to share with him. It's good if you can share your essays, he can send you his and you send him yours and everyone give the remarks. And of course, when you receive the remarks of your friend, you can accept them or refuse or uh, argue. Uh, that they are not, uh, maybe not all the remarks would be uh, acceptable or all the remarks would be acceptable. It depends. Okay, but what matters is that you share with other people and you get their opinions. And believe me, when other people look at your paper, your paper would be better and they will raise your, uh, this is for all students, uh, they will uh, make you conscious of some, uh, would say, mistakes that can be avoided because you did not pay attention to, to them. Now, if you remember, we stopped in before uh, working on, a, uh, on your plan. Now, look at <clears throat> this read. We have not started talking about descriptive essay yet. Okay. Now read these lines and tell me what you get. <clears throat> now here we are talking about the plan. Planning, which is very important. Thank you. 
Yes. So, how can you uh, give us a resume of what is said in those few lines concerning narratives? <clears throat> Uh, before I forget, uh, can you suggest a, a descriptive essay as a homework for next time? Yes, but you need to explain to us what you want to say, Ahmed. What did you understand from this? First, please suggest to me uh, a, a descriptive essay for next week. Mm -hmm. So Salma is describing, is um, suggesting something. Uh, Jal Ali is giving us big Yes. Now here, uh, for example, an event, uh, just when you, we will opt for this one. I mean, you can, you can of course, write, uh, describe a within party. Of course, here, remember that when you describe, you should not fall in the trap of telling a story. Uh, events. Otherwise, it will be a narrative you describe. Today, we will talk about how to describe, okay? So, it's not like dealing with a narrative because you can talk about a within party in a narrative way, talking about events, what have you done, activities, what was done first, what was done next. This is narration. So, don't confuse uh, of course, we can have essays where we mix both narrative and descriptive. It is possible. But remember that you are tested. Okay? would like to see uh, when, when it is a descriptive uh, uh, essay, for example, the focus should be more on descriptions rather than on events. And if it is a narrative essay, we'd like to have, again, a focus more on events rather than descriptions. Though we can have both. I mean, it is possible to have a mixture of narration and description. But if it is a narrative essay, events should predominate. In a descriptive essay, description should dominate. Okay, so that's your homework for next time. Please make sure to write, okay? And not just the one I'm giving you. You can add other things, but uh, you're required to, uh, uh, all of you, at least to write, describe a within party. 
And then within party, especially in a Moroccan within party, you have a lot to say. Okay, maybe we will, uh, while uh, talking about descriptive essay after, maybe you can see how we can deal with the, the topic. Now back to uh, to the lines uh, to finish first with narration. Uh, what do we have here? Can you give me kind of summary of this sentence, of these few sentences? Yes. What is the main event before writing the essay? What is the main goal? Yes. Yes, what is the main event? What is the main thing you are we want to talk about? Yes. Of course, after doing uh, to decide about the main event before writing the essay. And then, of course, when you know the main event, then you can. Yes, Khadija, you're right. If you know what is your main event, then you whatever when you, especially when you finish brainstorming, you organize things, you know, you decide what should be uh, here, what should be there, what should be before the event, what should be in the event, what should be after. That's very important as as a as a first step but remember what we have talked about last time uh when we talked about before uh before this this is very important so i have to make sure to to have something to say in all uh the three boxes and the second box, which is the most important, in the exam, you are required to have three paragraphs. Yes, plan is very important. 
but still it's not a prison okay it is only a a guide you can have a plan and while writing you 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 realize that you can modify uh? yeah you can modify the plan anytime so have a plan okay but it can be modified anytime what matters is you start with with a with a with a with a with a plan yes it's a it's like a guide it guides you and uh, when you have a plan plan you avoid repetition of ideas uh, you are sure you know what you start with what you finish with everything is clear in your mind good <clears throat> all right so if you can do that so when you have your plan then you can start writing your uh, narrative essay. Now, let's move to description. Now, descriptive writing, is different from narrative essays. What are the characteristics of descriptive essays? Something that is essential that you have to remember. Descriptive essays. What is the main difference between a narrative and a descriptive essay? Yeah, vocabulary, <clears throat> vocabulary you can have. Uh... Yes, so yes, so if we have a story <clears throat> in a narrative essay, so here in a descriptive, there is no story. We don't tell a story. Okay, as Jalal mentioned, Hajar has mentioned, is meant to convey an intense An intense description of a particular place, object, or concept. So uh, give me two minutes and I'll be back to you. Two minutes, please.
Yes, is there any other difference between uh, descriptive and, and narratives? Descriptive essays and narrative essays. Yes, how did it happen? Yes. It's like if you are taking, uh, uh, when you describe, it's like if you take a picture, not even a video, a picture and you are describing it. So if we consider, for example, the wedding uh, party. Mm -hmm. Yes, what you see, smell, touch. Now here the senses that you are saying something that we will talk about later on. I know harm if we put it. On what you can see, smell. Baba, Baba, Baba. Not just uh, smell, touch, uh, what you see, smell, touch, we can add also here, taste and touch, rather than what is uh, happening. Okay, so the five senses All right, now we will go on and then we, we see what, what uh, we have here. Look at the, the few lines here and uh, summarize in one sentence, please. Well, uh, lead the event, uh, not sure. Uh, maybe be involved. Huh? When you say deeply involved, it means it's like if you, if you make him share the experience. Yes, yes, that's what Yassin is, is saying.
Yes, it's as if when you describe a within uh, party, if this description is good, it's as if you can see what, what the writer has seen. You can uh, hear what the, the writer hears. Where, where is effect? Effect, where is it? Yes, you're right. Thank you. It's effect, of course. Thank you for the remark. It's effect, of course, uh, the effect not through facts, but using detailed observations. And so the more your observation is detailed, in other words, the more you have details, the more your description is, uh, is successful. So if you can make the reader feel, share the experience, uh, see what you can see, hear what you can hear, smell what you can smell, that would be a perfect description. And, and generally, description is, is, is a bit difficult uh, uh, because it needs a very rich vocabulary. Yes, now, Ahmed is giving here the example of the, of, uh, uh, of, uh, the one who comments or presenter in a, in a, in a radio. Uh, makes you involved uh, in uh, in the scene, though uh, the situation is different. But though you cannot see, you are not present. If the the presenter or the commentator is is uh, successful, uh, you like to listen to him because he brings uh, uh, makes things alive for you. Though you are not present uh, in that place. Okay, what do you want to describe now here? Now this is what generally uh, the focus in description is about these things. Okay, so if you want to, to prepare something for the exam, Suggest things that has to do with with the with these things. I mean, you cannot go away from basically those elements. So, either you describe a person, you describe a place, you describe a memory, an experience, an object. That's generally what we we describe. Okay. Now, of course, here when we say a person. We have here suggestions given by a few minutes ago from your friend, uh, uh, one of your friends. Let me see. Yes. If we say person, uh, Hajar is giving us examples. He's like, uh, describe the, the, the strangest person you ever met. Uh, describe a person you envied. Uh, uh, now here, place. Describe a spooky or haunted place. This, this describe a place you loved as a child. You see here, we have always the word place, but of course with different uh, uh, small additions. Okay, so you can with friends suggest topics that has to do with description relate to these main points here and be sure that you may have a chance to, to guess the exam uh, topic because you cannot go beyond those topics anyway. Yes, now Umayma talked about uh, Ahmed describing his experience with e-learning. Yes, if there are no events, then it, it, look, it will look like a description. Okay. 
but remember that narration that's why i say uh, a few minutes ago about the, the the essay of ahmed though it was a good one but we 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 fail to to label it as a pure narrative essay uh, whether it is argumentative whether it is opinion uh, which is, whether it is a descriptive so in the exact try to make sure that you show the reader that you know what is a narrative essay, or what is a descriptive essay. Next. Why are you writing your descriptive essay? Now, don't tell me because the teacher told us to write it. Now, uh, read these few lines here and tell me why are you writing your descriptive essay? Well, this is, these, these lines are very important to keep in mind, please. Why do we write a descriptive essay? What is the goal? It's not about just remembering. For example, in the case of, of uh, describing a wedding party that we have given as a homework, why would you describe a wedding after all? You have to remember that we don't describe. We don't, yes. So either you like this because you are describing a particular within. You are not describing a within, within in general. Okay. So remember that we, we don't describe for the sake of describing. We don't describe just to describe, full stop. No, we describe because there is a reason behind. For example, if, if uh, 
uh, if we take the, the case of the wedding party, yes, with you in the wedding, yes, you involve the, 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 the reader, yes, but it's not telling what happened, Tarek. If you say what happened, that's narration. We don't describe for this. For example, my reason would be to show that I liked so here the example of the wedding, for example. Huh? We will take example of the wedding party. Now, either I liked, and in your description, you have to show why you liked, okay? Or I disliked. It can be one possibility. But anyway, whenever I, I describe something, I'm not describing it for the sake of describing, full stop. I have be, be, a reason behind, which may be uh, an attitude, and it's from the very beginning, uh, you have to prepare the reader for that. It's either... From the very beginning, you prepare the reader that you have attended a memorable, wonderful, fantastic wedding party. And just from the, the beginning, the reader would expect descriptions that show why you consider it as exciting, as fantastic, or the other way around, a horrible and awful uh, wedding party, and then you tell us why you consider it as, as being awful. Remember, we can describe the same event and we will describe it in a different way. And you can, you can notice this, for example, in wedding ceremonies. In the same wedding, you can find some people are very happy, very excited, and others who are uh, gloomy, uh, don't like... Uh, because everyone has his own uh, uh, standards, different standards of uh, what could be called a within ceremony. Yes, how you feel, maybe, and liking is 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 a bit uh, includes feelings. How do you feel about that? And this would be reflected in your description. It's not about just describing, because if you describe without a goal, so your description must have a, a goal, mainly to share your attitudes, okay? To share your attitudes, for, for instance, to share your attitude with the reader. It's like when you finish your description, the reader is uh, persuaded, is influenced in a way, and would adopt the same attitude because of the good description that you have offered. Okay, so please, this is something very important that you have to remember. Whenever you describe something, you have to ask yourself, why am I describing? What am I, what is the goal I, I'm, I'm aiming at? If you know that from the very beginning, so your the, the description will be directed towards that goal. But if you yourself, you don't know why you are describing, then you'll have mixed things uh, that has no coherence. Okay, now here we have an example, which makes it clear. The example, look at the example. Uh, someone to read, please, the example. I would like to read. Yes? Someone to read? A volunteer? Or are you fasting? May I read? Yes. Thank you. 
um, imagine that you want to write a descriptive essay about your grandfather. You have chosen to write about your grandfather's physical appearance and the way uh, that it interact that he interacts with people. However, rather than providing a general description of these aspects, you want to convey your admiration for his strength and kindness. This is your reason for writing the descriptive essay. To achieve this, you might focus one of your book. You might focus on one of your book. I guess we have to add on between focus and one. Uh huh. To focus on one of your to to focus in one. In. Mm -hmm. uh, you might focus in one of your paragraphs on describing the roughness of his hands, roughness resulting from the labor of his work throughout his life. But you might also describe how he would hold your, your hands so gently with his rough hands when having a conversation with you. With you, oh wait. Oh, I would, would hold your hand so then with his rough hand when having a conversation with you or when taking a or walk. When to, or when taking a walk, yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for uh, for uh, uh, this is like this is something just I have just added. It was not part of the that's why I I, I, I was not uh, what's a mistake it was not proofreaded. Sorry for that. Um okay. yes, now here. What uh, the topic or the description you are supposed you are describing your grandfather? I remember we are going back to uh, to the the things we have talked about here. Whenever you describe you, you have to describe some one of these things. Now here it's like a person. Yes, uh, or may may have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, your question, please. Umayma, you have a question? Yes, if you are describing your grandfather Okay, uh, what will you talk about? Uh, uh, you will not describe someone else because the focus on this essay is to describe your grandfather, not your grandmother, for example. Uh, the focus is on him. But again, what, what matters here is why am I describing my grandfather? Yeah, that's the goal. That's the reason for the description. Okay, now you, you have chosen. You see, you have chosen. It's not imposed on you. You choose to describe his physical appearance. Uh, you, may, you may not choose physical appearance. You may talk and describe uh, his character. Okay, you can, when you describe a person, you describe uh, either uh, his physique Okay, or his character. So if you, you choose. So it means that it's your decision. It's the decision of the writer to decide about whatever he would like to describe. And that's, now you tell me, how can I decide? It's brainstorming that will help you. When you brainstorm, if you have more ideas about the physical appearance, then you decide that you will describe physically. If you have more ideas about the character, then you decide that you will describe the character of your grandfather. Or you can mix both. Okay, possible to, to mix both. Yes, Hajar, you can mix both. Now, but still, why am, am I describing my grandfather? Now here, this is the reason for this writer. You want to convey your admiration of his strength and kindness. This is my goal. So if it is my goal, whatever description I have to say would lead me to that goal of showing strength 
and kindness. Now, you see that, for example, here, we imagine that your grandfather works in agriculture. And of course, when you work with your hand, your hands are rough. Roughness means being, uh, would suggest being hard, tough. But look at the sentence after. Though his hands are rough, and that's due to his job, but the fact his kindness appears whenever he holds you so gently, so the rough hands, okay, becomes here a sign of kind, kindness, okay? So you see here that you can describe his uh, physical appearance, the fact that he has rough hands, but the way he holds her uh, or him in his hand so gently, and that reflects his kindness. Yes, so the contrast is interesting. And it happens many times we, 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 we judge people from the, their appearance because we don't know them. We don't know that they are very kind, but because we look at their appearance, we judge them. We have a value judgment most of the time, uh, which is not correct. Now here, uh, one thing to remember is uh, whatever you want to describe, remember that you have to tell yourself, why am I describing? What is my goal? If you know your goal and you have, should be stated from the very beginning, it's for you. It's something that you have to keep for yourself. Okay? In the plan, in brainstorming, whatever. Okay? Then all the description you, you have to think about, should you should keep in mind your goal. My goal is to show the kindness of my grandfather. I should not show a description, for example, in which he is violent. Because that would contradict my goal of showing his kindness. So whatever, because my goal is to show first his strength, because he's doing a job in which a manual job automatically is strong, though he may be old. But that physical strength goes hand in hand with, with kindness. There are some people who are strong physically and they can harm other people. Others, they can be strong physically, but very kind of people. I mean, if they are strong, that does not mean that they are unkind to, to other people. So it all depends on you and what you want to, to write in your description. So again, going back to the uh, yes, and of course here you 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 personal statements that that's the best place where you have to to give your personal opinions and yes, of course you are describing your grandfather. Yeah, these I mean, I see we are confused in per personal statements that we have talked about a few minutes ago. Personal statement is when you address the reader. I will tell you about, this is something that you have not to use. But personal opinion, personal uh, description, that's, that's what you have to write, of course. So do not confuse the two things, please. Okay, now, so clear, this, this is a key word that you have to remember, please. The goal and also the attitude, whether you have a positive or negative attitude from the very beginning, you have to, to inform the reader so that he has some expectations, okay? The wedding party was awful, was the worst wedding party I have ever been to. Yeah, you have to tell us why. And then this is how you describe. 
Of course, a wedding party, for example, has a lot to talk about in a wedding party. You may focus on one thing. You may focus focus on on guests. For example, if you want to to talk about the beauty of the event, the uh, it was uh, magnificent, uh, very beautiful, uh, awesome uh, wedding party. If you focus on clothes worn by guests, for example, kaftans, uh, uh, the beauty of those clothes, you can describe just the clothes. You can describe the food. You can describe the music band. You can describe the bride. You can describe the bridegroom. You, you can focus on whatever you want. Possible. If you have mixed uh, opinions, then you have to to this to prepare the reader for that from from the very beginning. Okay, but it can be the same wedding party as I told you, and one will like it very much, another person would hate. If someone is going to a wedding party just to eat, then the best time for uh, for him would be the time when lunch or dinner is is offered and what is the menu uh, if the menu is food that you don't like then it's the worst wedding party that you have ever attended suppose you you don't like chicken and you find chicken and no choice just chicken. That would be the worst thing that can happen to you. I'm giving a, a very simplistic reason. But anyway, you need to have a goal for your description. How should you write your description? Can you please read? Uh, here we have a very good example if you can follow. It's from here up to here. You can summarize, please. Give me just a resume of these things in one or two sentences, no more.
But remember, you have to answer the question how you should write your description. Your answer should should be related to this question. How should you write your description? That's it. And look at the example given to you, uh, the difference. Yes, now here you need to show, not to tell. Yes. So here it's as if, as your friend has mentioned, To set the scene, then develop using sensory details, figurative language with a picture in the reader's mind and help him to know how the character is like. So the reader's mind, you have to involve the reader. Okay. And here, this is completed with what Khadija mentions. It's like you, you, you paint a picture for, for the reader to to share the same experience, okay? Not just to tell, to show, to describe, to paint a picture. It's as if you, you put the character in front, it's like you are watching a film, uh, showing a film to someone about a person being, uh, um, and you help the reader imagine the situation. How can the reader imagine this situation if, the, if your description is full of details? It's like here, can you see? I uh, rested my head against the top of the chair. My eyelids began to feel uh, heavy and the edges of the empty plate in front of me blurred with the white tape cloth. Okay, that shows signs of being tired. It's not like, and you see, if you tell, it's very short. But if you describe, it becomes longer. So practically, it's the same idea. Uh, here it is told, I grew tired after dinner, full stop. Very short, but here you are telling. Whereas here, the same idea, showing how a person is tired, but here it is describing, it is showing. It is like taking, I would say, a picture of someone uh, and uh, drawing a picture or taking a picture of someone and the reader can imagine the situation as if he was present. Okay. Then, uh, this is something that we have already mentioned, but it's good to... to was mentioned before by your friend. So what does it say here?
Yes. Yes, Mukhtar, you paint the picture. Okay. Yes, but here, what is important are the senses. Yes, yes, yes. Not just one. You have to try to use as many senses as you can. Okay, of course, depending on the thing to be described. You cannot use the five senses in all situations, of course. If you describe a car, uh, you will not uh, uh, you will not use taste, for example. Maybe you can, but uh, it's not like if you if you describe an apple. If you describe an apple, then you can describe the taste, you can describe the smell, you can describe the touch, the sound while eating it, and its sight when you talk about the color, etc. Now here, the the big mistake that students do is that they focus on one sense, and most of the time is what they can see. Okay? So do not... Do not focus just on one sense. And most of the time, whenever we say describe, students uh, describe what they can see. Forgetting that, they can describe what they can hear, okay? What they can uh, uh, touch. And one way of doing it is uh, so that you try First, you have to ask yourself from the very beginning, how can I, well, describe what you can see straightforward, which will come to you at first. But then you can see, is there a possibility to, say, to add what I can smell, what I can uh, hear? Okay. Then you see which details can be added. And then you can, uh, or maybe you can have a paragraph where you describe what you can see, a paragraph when you describe what you can smell or what you can hear or what you can touch, touch, etc. But remember, whatever you are describing is meeting the same goal. Okay? If you like, you will not say good smell, for example. You are talking about bad smell. That's why you said you, you, don't, you don't like or uh, what you hear sometimes uh, if we take into consideration uh, consideration within parties uh, if you have a music band which is bad so instead of enjoying music it becomes uh, noise and here uh, that would be uh, describing a music band as uh, uh, giving noise more than than uh, music etc so do not focus just on one sense. This is very uh, important. Okay. Now, have you got any questions so far about what I have said today? Any questions? Yes, why not sitting? Yes, but uh, yes, oh, you are describing, you can describe the sitting part of description. Yes, why not? But remember, just whatever you are describing should meet the same goal. Uh huh. Is there any question about what I have mentioned? About what I have said from the very beginning?
No questions? Are you sure there are no questions about what I have? To have said something which was not clear? No questions? But, so please remember to write. I congratulate uh, Ahmed uh, for having written his, his essay. That means that he has tried. Okay, it was good, some mistakes, but it's not a big deal. But I would like you please to write uh, as many essays as you can. Remember, the focus in the exam will be on narrative or descriptive essays. So uh, narrative, we say story. Uh, uh, descriptive, you know what you could describe, man, a person, a place, uh, etc. Okay, and share with friends. Uh, I can give you my email, Ahmed, but my problem is is that um, is that I'm I'm actually uh, I have a lot of work to do. I'm really very busy. Um, if you if you if you if you just keep in mind that I have this year. 35 students just uh, preparing their end module paper. Can you imagine 35 students? I have to correct. Uh, and then correct and recorrect and then giving back. And then I'm, I'm up to now, I'm, I'm uh, so, so, so busy. Plus, we have not finished correcting rattrapage uh, or recap exams. So many papers that they have to correct. So if you have any question, you just share it with me here. Uh, OK, and I wish you uh, good luck because I can give you my email and you send me. Maybe we never have uh, time to read your email because now I see that I have uh, uh, nearly 90 emails that I have to to answer. And I don't know. Uh, uh, so I have to start. Uh, uh, no need to say that I am a little bit stressed. That stress part of life. But anyway, I will do our best. So I wish you good luck. Uh, happy Ramadan once more. Uh, remember that Ramadan is not just for sleeping. Uh, Ramadan is for working. Uh, and maybe working, you have enough time to work more. But of course, you can take time, some time to relax, to make a pause. Don't make it a holiday. Take care of yourself. And uh, goodbye.